Climate Earth and Climate Check have teamed up for this webinar with the common purpose of sharing the business case for greenhouse gas management. Pablo's topic, cost reduction through supply chain greenhouse gas management, is timely and compelling as many companies look at the strategic value of carbon for increased profitability. The presentation will take uh, roughly 30 minutes, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. And now I'm pleased to introduce Pablo Poster. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending on such a dreary San Francisco day. But of course, things are always sunny and beautiful in cyberspace. Uh, I wanted to thank Climate Earth for hosting this webinar. I wanted to thank especially Frankie for organizing this webinar. and all of you for taking time out of your busy days to attend. As Frankie mentioned, Climate Check is a greenhouse gas services company. Uh, you might wonder why we're doing a webinar together with Climate Earth, which is an enterprise carbon accounting company. Uh, the reason is that our services uh, complement each other, because Climate Earth's tool that they have developed provides actionable information for decision makers and companies for reducing the company's emissions, whereas Climate Check provides greenhouse gas accounting that is verifiable and at a high level um, and, and high quality um, for the purpose of either compliance or generating carbon credits. I'm going to begin today by talking about a personal pet peeve of mine, and that is the term carbon footprint. Now, we've all heard carbon footprint. It gets thrown around all the time, even on television. Ever since Al Gore's movie came out, everyone has been talking about climate change and what's your carbon footprint. The problem with this term, though, is that carbon refers to a single carbon molecule. So it can be a bit confusing when you're actually talking about carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. Footprint refers to a measure of area, whereas greenhouse gas emissions are certainly not a, a uh, area, but rather a volume or a mass. So what I would propose is that we talk about carbon dioxide equivalents, which covers all greenhouse gases. And instead of talking about footprint, we talk about inventory, which refers to a accounting of volume. So altogether, when a company accounts for its greenhouse gas emissions, we call this a corporate greenhouse gas inventory. There are several, several reasons why companies would embark on a greenhouse gas management program. This begins with simply with compliance. If you're in a Kyoto country, uh, which is most countries except for the U.S., then your government has a, a compliance program in place where a lot of companies have to reduce their emissions in order to meet those Kyoto targets. Here in the U.S., we have several regional initiatives, including the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative in the Northeast, AB 32 in California, and the Western States Climate Initiative all of which will have a compliance component. The next reason why companies might in, embark in greenhouse gas management is cost savings, either by avoiding uh, the penalties of not meeting their obligations under a program like the Chicago Climate Exchange, or simply for improving their energy efficiency. The next reason is for public image. There's certainly a lot of marketing value in being perceived as a green company these days, and a lot of companies are getting on that bandwagon. Finally, a lot of companies are seeing greenhouse gas management as a potential profit source. It's true that if you reduce your emissions through a project that would have not otherwise occurred, you're eligible for generating carbon credits, which have a tangible market value. Let me define the difference between standards and protocols. Standards provide a framework for accounting greenhouse gas emissions, whereas protocols provide a how-to manual with specific guidance for general scenarios. We have two standards that are relevant here, 
the ISO 14064 series of standards, one for corporate greenhouse gas accounting and one for project level accounting, which is typically used in the generation of carbon credits. Under protocols, we have one primary protocol, the GHG protocol, available at ghgprotocol.org. And many other protocols that are based off of it, but meet the specific needs of programs such as the California Climate Action Registry or Kyoto. There are separate standards and protocols for the entity level greenhouse gas inventories. These are corporate greenhouse gas inventories or even regional government greenhouse gas inventories. Um, and there are several for project level accounting as well. There's also a supply chain greenhouse gas protocol in development, and I'm on one of the teams that is working on developing that. Um, expect that to be out in the next two years. Under corporate greenhouse gas accounting, we have established three different scopes or segments of company emissions um, to help categorize the, the different sources. Uh, scope one is any direct emissions, and that includes the combustion of fuels such as oil or wood or anything like that, uh, and even the leakage of, of greenhouse gas harming refrigerants. Indirect emissions result from the use of electricity or imported heat and steam. Scope three is simply everything else. This includes anything from business travel, contractor activities, or even employee commutes. While scope one and two is included in most greenhouse gas inventories under most programs, scope three is completely optional. The unfortunate thing about scope three being optional is that most companies choose not to include it, missing some of the greatest opportunities for emissions reduction. Depending on the company, the supply chain can represent over 90% of overall emissions. Some companies, of course, are very vertically integrated and are responsible for all of their direct and indirect emissions uh, through their supply chain uh, because they own the supply chain. But other companies are not vertically integrated and outsource a lot of their activities. That puts a lot of their activities under scope three, and therefore they usually don't include those emissions when they account for their supply chain emissions. Let's look at an example from a paper that I wrote on the greenhouse gas emissions from wine production and distribution. We looked at several different wines from around the world. The emissions from cultivating the grapes and making the wine were all relatively similar, averaging around one kilogram per bottle. You can see the lower segments of the bar graph uh, are all hovering right around 1,000 grams. The striking difference between the wines shown in the graph comes from shipping emissions. That's the top dark segment on the graph. A wine sent to Chicago by ship and truck from France creates less greenhouse gas emissions than one transported by truck from California. 